This week has been about three interconnecting concepts, spans, subspaces, and loci. In this video, I want to talk about planes and hyperplanes specifically and go over the methods of describing them. A plane or hyperplane is the locus of one equation, so let me start by talking about linear equations again. Here is the general form of a linear equation. The numbers are constants, and the u's are entries of a vector in Rn. The left side of this, however, looks very much like a dot product. Multiplication of matching indices and then adding up all those multiplied terms. Indeed, I could write it as a dot product of a vector of constants, the a numbers, and an unknown vector u and rn. And if you prefer to think of it this way, here's the r3 version as well. What the equation says is that the dot product of a vector u with some fixed vector of constants a must be equal to some constant c. I can interpret any linear equation this way, as specifying a particular dot product. Where does this description get me? Well, let me look more carefully at the R3 case. The vector a1, a2, a3, what does it mean? If c equals 0, then the dot product equaling 0 means that the vectors are perpendicular, so the equation asks what vectors x, y, z are perpendicular to this fixed vector a1, a2, a3. These perpendicular vectors define a plane, the plane that is perpendicular to the fixed vector a1, a2, a3. And that fixed vector will now be called the normal to the plane. That is the case when c equals 0. The remarkable thing here is that this construction still makes sense when c is not equal to 0. In this case, the vector a1, a2, a3 is still perpendicular to the plane, but only as a local direction vector at some point on the plane. It is still called the normal vector, but I just have to remember that it acts as a local direction vector. So, that gives me a way to calculate equations of planes. All I need is a point and a normal. Here's an example with a point 3, 0, negative 1, and the normal negative 1, negative 5, negative 4. The normal gives me the coefficients for the linear equation, negative 1 for x, negative 5 for y, and negative 4 for z. I write the equation down, then only c is unknown, but I have a point. So I can put in x equals 0, x equals 3, y equals 0, and z equals negative 1 into the equation. The left side is now just numbers, and I can do the arithmetic to conclude that c equals 1, and that's the last piece of information I need. So the equation of the plane is negative x minus 5y minus 4z equals 1. Given a point in a normal, I can describe the plane, at the very least describing it as a locus. Even more, this method works in any Rn. The idea of a normal isn't limited to R3. The setup in Rn is the same, just with vectors that have more entries, and the algorithm, given a point in a normal, runs exactly like this, only with more co coefficients and describing a hyperplane instead of just a plane in R3. Now let me talk about the other ways to describe planes. Unlike the previous process, these two are going to be unique to R3, so I'm going to use the cross product, which only lives in R3. In R3, I can determine a plane by being given a point and two local directions. You can think about this as a point and two ways you can move, and by moving in those two ways you can cover an entire plane. How do I then determine the equation of the plane? Well, I do this by taking the cross product of the two local directions. Since a cross product produces a unique perpendicular direction, u cross v must be the local direction normal. Well, then I have a point and a normal, and I use the process from the previous slide. Finally, the most common way perhaps to describe a plane in R3 is by giving three points. Any three points define a plane, at least as long as the three points aren't all on the same line. Given three points, I can make local directions on the plane by taking differences of the points. Q minus P and Q minus R are local directions on the plane. Then I just repeat what I did before, I have local directions, so I take the cross product to get the normal, and I have a normal and a point, I have three points even, so I use the method on the previous slides to finish the equation of the plane. 
and that gives me basically everything I need to know for equations of planes in R3.